when we isolate bacteria from the environment, it's actually quite hard to isolate bacteria as singly pure cultures, what we call an axenic culture. What that means is that there's one and only one species. Usually, the way that we do this is by taking the bacteria and we streak them on a streak plate so we have a lot of growth and then we streak across here so we have less growth and then we streak across here so we have less growth and then we streak across here so that we get down to individual colonies. And the argument is that the individual colonies all arise from a single bacteria and it's a pure axenic culture. And if you do this multiple times, if you take one of these single colonies, you take this one and you put it onto a new plate and you repeat this streaking of bacteria out, then eventually you're going to have a pure culture. It turns out in practice that this doesn't happen. And part of the reason is shown in these beautiful atomic force microscope images that I'm showing here, where we have bacteria that are in really close association with either other bacteria or archaea. These associations often are so tight that even if you streak out cultures multiple times, you can never get a simply pure culture. This is something that we've run into time and again when we're isolating bacteria from the environment and then sequencing their genomes. Another common place where we often identify multiple genomes related to each other is when we do metagenomic binning. And so when we resolve our bins using something like differential coverage binning that I've discussed earlier, what we often find is multiple bins. So here's bin one, and we've got a genome. Bin two, and we have a genome, and so on. Bin three, and we have a genome. But instead of actually accurately and correctly binning our genome, what we've done is we've mixed different kinds of genomes into the same bins. And so we've said, oh, we think that this is a single organism, when in fact it's actually multiple organisms. So we put together a tool called GenomePeak that allows us to answer both of these questions. It allows us to test whether bacteria that we isolate from the environment are pure culture bacteria in axenic culture, and it simultaneously allows us to test our metagenome bins to say, are these correct? Are these pure bins? Or do we think that they're contaminated with other things? The way that GenomePeak works is that you upload your DNA sequence to our website, and we compare your sequences to several marker genes. We use the 16S gene. We use the RecA or RADA recombinase, we use RPOB, and we use GROW-EL. It doesn't really matter what the function of those proteins are. They're highly conserved. They're present in most organisms that we look at. But the key is that the 16S gene is everywhere, as we've already talked about. But for these three genes, they're housekeeping genes. And the advantage of housekeeping genes is that Many, if not all, organisms have them, but because they encode proteins, they can change much faster than the 16S can. And so that allows us to do what we call species-level resolution. We can identify different species using these particular genes. We can't do that easily with the 16S gene. It's really only good at kind of genus-level resolution. So what Genome Peak does is it takes your reads, we assemble contigs, or if you've provided us contigs, we just use those contigs that you've provided. We compare to the database of 16S, of RecA, of RPOB, and of GROWEL, and we do that separately. So we have four different databases. And based on that comparison, we can identify whether your sequence is contaminated or not. And so in the first example here, we've taken a single 
genome where we've been able to get a pure isolate for that genome and we've uploaded it to Genome Peak and you can see that each of the four markers are showing there's only a single organism that's present in that data set. In contrast, when we look at the second data set shown here, you can see that each of the four markers are showing contamination where we've got more than one organism present. So in this case, we would probably try and do some more work to deconvolute the two genomes. Can we separate them by, for example, tetranucleotide frequency? Can we separate them by gene content? Can we separate them by some kind of signature sequences or are there other ways that we can separate those genomes? And so GenomePeak provides a quick, fast visualization of your genomes or of your metagenomic bins and allows you to determine approximately whether or not they're contaminated.